Uh, let's get started. Uh, thanks everybody for accommodating the new time. Hopefully people were able to um, figure it out. And uh, let's see, we have 18 people on the call, which is not too bad. Um, Lucina just pasted in the meeting, meeting notes, for which thank you. Um, so I think the only thing on the agenda right now is the API snoop. Um, but uh, I'd love to sort of open up the agenda if there's um, other areas folks would like to discuss. I think unfortunately we're missing um, Asitha and William and folks. Um, I presume that they're heads down in preparation for Google Next. And so um, that's, we're not going to be able to get the update this month on uh, how we're doing with Globant and the testing and such. Although I guess from what I see on emails, it's progressing well. Anybody else want to speak up? Brad? Deepak? Uh, not much. I, I, we did make a submission. I know you mentioned to me um, to, to make a submission for Shanghai because I'm going to be there um, helping out with a Kube Doc Sprint. Um, so uh, Shrini and I did, did make a submission there. I don't know if it'll get in or not, but um, if not, we'll use that as an opportunity to spread the gospel, my friend. Great. Hi, Dan, this is Deepak. Yeah, I think we're about to uh, submit that either today or tomorrow, but this week for sure. Okay. Um, so, uh, Chris, do you want to go ahead and um, take over and you could give us an update on the API snoop and where things stand with the cap, with the cap and such? Sure, will do. Um, I've uh, been to SIGARC and SIG app, and I'll be attending SIG testing this week to do a, an introduction to the CAP and request feedback and sponsorship. Um, after I do so, I'll send out a, an email uh, to the list to, to get the discussion going. Um, and that's, uh, it's, it's been I've got some pretty positive feedback so far. Um, we've also uh, uh, simplified the client go and user agent audit logging uh, PR. Um, so it's um, simple to, to understand. It's not, these aren't really big changes, but there's some um, interest on uh, trying to, to distinguish this from um, tracing and open tracing. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time this week digging in and, and ensuring that there's not a, um, that they're uh, the explaining the overlaps and differences between um, this approach and, um, and, and, open tracing. We've also submitted a talk, a two talks actually, um, for both Shanghai and um, Seattle. And uh, you did the small update on API snoop.cncf.io. Yes. Oh, we did that as well. There was some uh, some minor glitches uh, to the to the UI, and we've also grayed out some of the prototyping areas um, uh, that are that are still. We we need to get the um, uh, more data in, and I've, uh, the focus has kind of been on getting the kep to a point where people are are, are interacting with it. Um, so this this next few weeks will be bringing in uh, more of those features and 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 data sets within the API Snoop UI. Yeah, could you also gray out where it says Kubernetes and E to E conformance cube test at the top? Sure. Since those aren't, I know eventually those will be options, but right now they don't do anything. Performance and, um, e and then could you just remind me when, um, uh, how often are you updating these results? Um, currently, uh, I w um, we're uh, not updating the, the web UI. Um, that often, it's not been. Okay, because at the bottom it says 2018-0530, so that's correct. So that then, correct. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, in principle, you could be running this on master, yes, and it would let you see the, new tests that are added. And to have Although a, a that's where the history there yeah. is to show what's happening over time. 
Sure. Although I guess I can see the argument for just doing it with betas and release candidates, because you're not going to get useful results if you run it on master and have the test fail. Yeah, true that. I think it'll help okay. during well, I the remain very down cycle for a release. Um, yeah. I do as well, and I, I'm, I remain very um, optimistic for that. Thanks for capturing that uh, note, Lucina. Okay, folks. I, I mean, the you know the program over overall has sixty one vendors um, included now. I guess I should have given that update before that we did also just decertify a small number of folks who didn't. Um, had gotten the original 1.7 certification in, but then hadn't done a new update since then. Uh, we didn't lose any vendors on it, but there were a couple vendors who had more than one implementation and presumably just hadn't hadn't gone forward with the other one. Um, so that but that expiration part of our process is working today um, as it was intended to. Um, but uh, if there's not other suggestions on areas you'd like to discuss. Um, we could end the call very early. Dan, so, I have a comment. This is Srini, um, basically, if you. Um, regarding the documentation of the test, uh, essentially, mm -hmm. there, are, there are a set of PRs that I submitted. Uh, they've been there for a while. Uh, these are to document the tests. Uh, we generate a document for every release of the tests that are part of the conformance suite, it's checked in under CNCF. So, so um, basically the documentation does um, refer to each test in ROC 2119 format. To, um, so it is important that these PRs um, um, get going. Uh, there are Few PRs that are already merged, but few of them are stuck for a while. So just as a contributor and core lead across a number of SIGs, it, it, <clears throat> just poke the SIGs up that are responsible, namely like Aaron and I are both on this call. So if, if you want to get review cycles, you know, just poke the appropriate at group inside of the uh, GitHub to make sure that it's going further. Uh, I do review that periodically as well as the, I, I often rely on Gubernator to be my source of truth because there's so much inbound from, from the Kubernetes project that it's almost impossible to manage just by uh, email alone. Yeah. Uh, so if it's assigned appropriately in GitHub, then it, it should get triaged appropriately. Okay. Much That's appreciated. Good. We will do that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to do that. Yeah, uh, that's uh, given that if one, once these PRs uh, are are all merged, I, I would like to generate the new document probably with one nine, uh, the set of the uh, test list for the one nine uh, release or one ten whatever. So we we don't have the document updated for a while. That's uh, my concern. Are you going to automate the updates with the SIG docs folks so that they can publish this as part of the release? That is eventually the plan, but before that, I, I, I do need all the documentation in place for all the conformance tests. That's why I'm kind of, um, but it's a good, a good point. Basically, I should work with them sooner or later, so. Um, I did have an agenda topic that I added, Dan, which was with regards to the CRI implementation and what it means to be uh, conformant. Uh, we don't necessarily have a, these are, these are extension points and distributions can do whatever they want to do. Um, but mm -hmm. I, think, I think it might be beneficial for us to have, I know we talked about profiles, about having some level of profiling for things like CRI or CNI. Uh, and start to think about that maybe a little bit sooner because there's a lot of marketing that goes into uh, some of these 
published statements that go out uh, and there's not there's there's some issues along with that right so an example of this is the publish the publishing that came on the uh, the Kubernetes site with regards to support for container D uh, and the mismatch of what that means with the actual testing and signal that has been given to the broader ecosystem. Uh, so it, it causes a bunch of issues and I think this fits into the profile space kind of nicely. Uh, and it might be a forcing functions for vendors to get onto the train uh, once, we, once we talk a little bit more about profiles. Uh, so that way they can actually get, you know, XCRI has been uh, validated for this release or something like that. So I guess what strikes me a little bit odd about it is that it, it, it seems like you're trying to jump over the API where you're not just saying, oh, I want to ensure that CRI is validated, which is definitely a core Kubernetes API, but you're, it sounds like you're saying, well, I'd also like to see that container D um, or an alternative is validated. You'd want to make sure that or, the, 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 the You'd want to make sure that an implementation certifies against a well-defined set of things in the API, right? Because it's one of those things where it, it falls into the profile category where like we, we're, we have, we called storage like one. Our, our abstraction layer previously was based upon cloud provider. And we said storage was a good place for us to delineate. But the CRI and CNI are also good places for us to start to you know, start to define that space of what it means to be a certified uh, provider for CNI or the CRI. Could you say uh, just a bit more on it? So I have my Acme Kubernetes engine and I get rid of container D and I switch to Kata. What is the profile that you're envisioning that the branding on my product would change? Or what's the test that I'm running differently in that scenario? There are a, there's a, a couple of sets of tests. You would obviously run the standard performance test for API uh, verification, but there would probably be also uh, a set of tests that exercise the node to CRI integration more rigorously. And I know that the Google folks are working on pieces of this. Um, and I think over time, expanding the set of tests to make sure that it's, you know, fully functional makes makes a ton of sense right but what, what i'm getting what i don't quite understand is it, just that it, it sounds like you're just saying i'm trying to decide are you just saying oh we should have way better tests for cri and i i'm, I'm sure the answer is yes that it's not remotely comprehensive enough and that those should just get added in and you know accepted by uh, is it signode and and sig architecture and such um, or are, are you trying to say something more with the profiles of, oh, and maybe we should have a container D profile versus a Kata profile versus I, 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 I think a, C, a CRI profile. We've talked a little bit about things like storage layers, but we now we haven't talked about some of the extension points. So if we were to say like a CNI certified profile or a CRI certified profile, that makes a that makes a lot of sense. That means that providers that want to meet the spec have to go through a set of tests to make sure that they're adhering to that spec and it passes for that version. Okay, but I, I'm, I'm sorry to be dense here, but I, I'm still just confused on uh, if we're just talking about the Kubernetes side of the CRI API, then I don't see the need for the profile because every certified Kubernetes implementation should pass 100% of the CRI API tests. There's, we don't have a structure for testing and validating that, right? Like that's not currently done. Um, so there's, there's the conformance tests, which, you know, again, currently have a bunch of holes in them, right? So if a, if a person were to swap providers and go from like cryo to kata, like for, or container D to kata, like your previous example, um, there, there could be a bunch of gaps in coverage to verify that, that you have met all of the CRI spec right so in order for you to do that you'd probably have to exercise these extra set of tests which are currently in flight or being created uh for the CRI. So, yeah so we're all agreed on the 
inadequacy of our current tests and the need to improve them. But where you've lost me is just on the question of the profile. Um, I, I don't get why you need a profile um, because even if, you know, Kata uses some API calls and um, ContainerD uses other ones, in principle, if they're supplied by CRI, then the ideal platonic uh, goal of a, our conformance test, if we ever hit it, would exercise all of those APIs. It seems like the profile would come in if you also wanted to to, to jump the API barrier and certify um, the Kata compliance or, or Container D or something else. Anyone else, please feel free to jump in here because I, I may just not be getting Dan, it. I'm it's having the same details. view you are. Dan, I'm having the same view you are. That's why I'm, I'm, you're kind of channel in my mind. I'm, I'm, I'm having the same struggle you are. I think if provided that, you know, we beef up conformance to be able to support all the details and exercise the points that get hit by the CRI or CNI, then it's irrelevant. Okay. Uh, but I don't think we're at that stage or will be at that stage for any period of time. Well, that's just kind of a- Well, okay, question. but then another way of just, sorry, uh, just another way of saying it would be, it would be really nice to run the API snoop, for example, um, on, some code that is exercising that and seeing the different API calls that Kata versus Creo versus Container D use. And, and that might help us prioritize which tests we want to be writing sooner. Yeah, I think that's actually a reasonable way to approach this. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. Because the, the, the key concept of a profile in my mind is that some conformant imp implementations do implement it and, and others don't. And, and we as a conformance community are fine with both of those and consider both of them, you know, uh, good members of the family. Right. And, and there's some legitimate need to, to take on the, the baggage of now having to explain why we have profiles, right? So anytime it's just like this situation where, well, no, once you get full coverage, this, this whole question becomes unnecessary, that's a good thing, right? So does that make sense, Dan? We, yeah, I, I, I've actually been surprised that we've been able to hold off on profiles so long. I, I'm, um, I'm thrilled that we've, we've been able to get this kind of base of adoption without needing them, because I do think it really complicates things, yep. particularly for application developers and, and just regular users, just having to try and figure out what this stuff means. Yep. Uh, folks should look at the link Aaron pasted into chat. That is nowhere near comprehensive enough. Um, I'm having conversations with the, uh, what's it called, with the node folks about a lot of the gaps and I'm, uh, I'm actually going to bring it up to steering this week with regards to some of the issues that we are seeing in the wild with CRIs. Uh, and the, the gap difference between what people have stated and where the world is at. And Tim, have you spoken to Asher Mithra about um, maybe prioritizing this for for Globin because I this area the the area of CRI because I know I on a previous SIG architecture call that they'd expressed that uh, CRI was an obvious area because as you're pointing out, there's this need for interoperability? Um, no, I have not talked to them explicitly, but I think if they were to target that area, that'd be great. All right, I, I can follow up with them. Uh, this is uh, Chris Osa from but I can follow up with them about that after this meeting. Sure, that'd be great. Maybe we can just move it onto the mailing list. Sure. Okay, well, I, I mean, I, I, I don't think this is totally done, but we can definitely um, come back to it if we decide um, that we do want to spend, uh, spend more effort on it. What was the thing that came up, I think, on the mailing list or on the call a month ago that was, we thought was going to be the first area we would do profiles in? Storage. Yeah. And I guess I haven't heard anything more about that.
I, I believe we had a, a discussion uh, with the, uh, we had someone come in from the storage team two weeks ago to talk about the profile. Okay, uh, where was it left? Yeah, I think what happened was uh, 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 Michelle actually from uh, yep. storage group in Google, she was proposing very granular level profile, such as you know the dynamic uh, volume provisioning thing. And we pretty much all decided that it has to be at the higher level, though, which is storage. And that's where we left off. When you say at okay. the higher level, so what do you mean? Pardon me? When you say at the higher level, you just mean storage. storage. At the storage level. At the, at the, the core. The core. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. More like I think uh, uh, he uh, uh, was saying, uh, Tim described it, uh, I think he pointed out that it should be more at the behavior level as opposed to. Okay, um, very cool. Okay. Uh, anyone else like to jump in on any topics? Hey Dan, this is Jose Luis from Globant. Uh, just to clarify what we were mentioning at the beginning, uh, we're just making progress as usual and what we've been sharing on, on emails. And I've just heard like uh, there's a priority you guys want us to onboard. We'll be happy to do that just to confirm with uh, Aish and Aaron. Uh, what well, will be our priority so we'll be glad to jump on anything you want us to work on basically we're working on persistent volumes and we have some prs uh, pending for you guys to approve in order to complete the end-to-end -end, uh, conformance process so if you guys help us with that that will be great i will be sending the, the status report us every week so you can guys uh, target the prs ids so we need you, your approval to move forward on those that's great, Jose. Really appreciate the update. Gladly. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, let me just finish with the thank you to, to Lucina for the note taking. We appreciate it. And um, speak to all of you uh, in a month, third Monday of the month. But uh, of course, please do jump on the mailing list if you have any thoughts uh, between now and then. Good update. Thank you. OK, bye now. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you all. Bye-bye.